bloody starving. Each of these hawker stores sells pretty much one dish, and they've been perfecting it for generations. You know, this is one of the only places in the world where street food vendors actually earn Michelin stars. Yes, I told you, I told you. Best satay on the island, for sure. Believe it or not, the satay that you see in this clip actually came from this kebab. Well, technically not from this specific kebab, but the idea of skewering meat all started in Mesopotamia or Middle East and spread east from India, Mongolia, China, and Southeast Asia through war and trade. And today, thanks to this kebab right here, which are made of these skewers, satay became one of the staple foods of Southeast Asia and each country seemed to have their own unique variation and technique. These include using yogurt, pineapple, soy sauce glaze, fish sauce, coconut milk, garam masala, and many more. In fact, there are so many versions that it's almost impossible to keep track of. Anyways, today we're going to attempt to recreate the Singaporean movie version from Newton Hawker Center. However, since it was impossible for me to get the actual recipe, I did the next best thing and combined my own memory during my student exchange in Singapore, my travels to Malaysia, and a modified version of Kenji Lopez Alt's recipe to arrive at the iconic, juicy, tender, and deeply caramelized flavor. Hope you enjoy! To start, we're going to slice the meat. I'm using 2 pounds of beef sirloin, but you could use any other meat like chicken, pork, or lamb. I like to cut the meat as thin as possible against the grain to shorten the muscle fibers and get a more tender texture. You can also freeze the meat for 30 minutes before cutting to get even thinner slices. Next, we'll transfer the meat into a bowl. This is an optional step, but I usually then add 1.5 teaspoon of baking soda per pound of meat for 20 minutes using the Chinese velveting technique from Recipe Tin Eats. This will not affect the taste, but will tenderize the muscle fibers making the meat even more tender. We're also going to soak our skewers in water for at least 20 minutes before cooking to prevent them from burning. Next, we're going to make the marinade. Chop one small onion or two shallots, six garlic cloves, and place everything in a blender with one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of white pepper, one tablespoon of sugar, two chopped lemongrass, one teaspoon of turmeric, one tablespoon of sambal or sriracha, and two teaspoon of crushed coriander seeds. Then blend everything in a food processor. <laughs> Once that's done, wash the meat to get rid of the baking soda and add half of the marinade to the meat which you can mix in like this. Then, place a plastic wrap over the meat and rest for 30 minutes to overnight. While the meat is resting, we're going to prepare the soy sauce glaze. Add half a cup of soy sauce along with 2 garlic cloves, 1 tablespoon of ginger, 1 star anise or anise, 2 cloves, and 2 thirds cup of any sugar to a small skillet. I'm using cane sugar, but any sugar works. Heat until it boils and reduce the heat to medium low for about 10 minutes. Stir occasionally so it doesn't burn and turn off the heat when the glaze coats the back of a spoon like this. Then, remove the glaze from the heat and strain the liquids to remove the spices. Next, we're also going to prepare the peanut sauce. Add the other half of the marinade to a skillet with 1 tablespoon of neutral oil. Turn up the heat to medium and fry the marinade for 2-3 to three minutes until fragrant. Then, I like to add 1 tablespoon of peanut butter with 2 tablespoons of crushed peanuts. I know that Kenji is against using peanut butter, but I personally find that mixing in peanut butter helps to distribute the peanut flavors to the whole sauce rather than just to the peanut chunks. Finally, add 2 teaspoons of tamarind paste, you could also use lemon or lime, half a teaspoon of the soy sauce glaze you just made, and half a cup of water. Mix everything together until it starts getting the consistency of a sauce, something like this. And you could always adjust the amount of water and other ingredients to your preference, but for me, all the amounts which I will write down in the description were just right. Next, skewer the marinated meat onto the top one third of the length of each skewer by threading them in a zigzag pattern like this. Kenji also suggests to use half of an onion or any other fruit to help skewer the meat, but I found that that was not necessary for me since I made sure to cut the meat as thin as possible, which made skewering very easy. Once that's done, according to Gordon Ramsay, there are two acceptable ways of cooking satay, on charcoal or on a grill pan. I usually use charcoals, but I decided to use the grill pan today, which is admittedly less authentic because it's actually minus 20 degrees here in Canada. In fact, here's a video taken right in front of my girlfriend's house. 
That being said, you should definitely use charcoals if your circumstances allow it, but this recipe still turned out amazing even without it. Anyways, since I'm using a grill pan, notice how when I put the skewers on the pan, the length of the stick creates an angle. Because of this, the tip of the satay will cook faster than the base as you can see in these pictures. To prevent this, I like to cut my satay skewers to shorten them so that the whole stick can fit the pan like this. Once that's done, drop a bunch of oil into the grill pan and raise the heat to medium high. The oil will not only prevent the meat from sticking, but will also be used to baste the meat to maximize its juiciness. Credits to Gordon Ramsay for this method. Place the skewers on the pan and cook until slightly charred before flipping. Then, notice how in this video, they drop an unknown liquid onto the meat during the cooking process. According to Kenji Lopez, this is usually oil or excess marinade. I found that you could get the same result by basting using the excess oil at the bottom of the pan as if you were cooking a steak. So, once one side is charred, lift the pan at an angle and use a spoon to baste the oil onto the meat, making sure to cover every piece. This is one of the secrets to turning lean cuts of meat into a juicy satay. Once the other side is charred, turn off the heat and brush the soy glaze onto each skewer. Make sure to glaze every single one. Then, keep glazing and don't forget to flip them to get both sides until it starts turning dark like this. Finally, remove the skewers from the pan but before eating, here's a pro tip. After you're done cooking, see all this caramelized sugar? If you let it cool off, it will harden and become very hard to wash. So, I added a few cups of water to the pan to deglaze the sugar. My future self thanked me. Thanks Andy. So there you have it, that was my take on satay from Crazy Rich Asians and this recipe really made me feel like I was back in Singapore. Although I know this is not the official recipe, I really think I managed to capture the right elements. It's tender thanks to the thin slices and the baking soda, it's juicy thanks to the marinade and the basting, and it's deeply caramelized thanks to the charring and the soy sauce glaze. I hope you give this recipe a try with a nice bowl of hot edamame.